Welcome, everyone. We're going to get started in about 30 seconds or so. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you all for joining us on International Women's Day. While we're waiting on everyone to get in the room, feel free to add in the chat where you're calling in from. That would be awesome to see where we're all joining from. <clears throat> Awesome. Hi, Winnie. Nice to see you. Or nice to know that you're here. Thomas from Detroit. Awesome. Dallas, Texas. Great. Thanks all for sharing. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks. Great. Well, I think we'll get started. Um, hello and welcome to Nimwa Exchange, a spinoff of the award-winning pandemic live stream series, BMA Nimwa. I'm Nimwa Senior Educator, Adi Gayoso, and I'm joined by my colleague, Ashley Harris, today. She's the Associate Educator at the National Museum of Women in the Arts. Hi, Addie, and hello, everyone. Um, each month, hosts from NIMWA are joined by special guests to center women creatives. We consider topics relevant to the world and offer insight into collaborations NIMWA is fostering while its building is closed for renovation. During this time of change, we are excited to exchange ideas with our guests and viewers. So glad you're joining us, Ashley. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Um, just a nod to Ginny, who's my typically my co-host, but she's traveling internationally today, so I was really excited to recruit Ashley to help today. So thanks again for being here. Last month, um, for those of you who joined us, you may recall that we spoke with Barbara Takanaga, an artist whose mesmerizing works are included in Nimwa's special exhibition, Positive Fragmentation. If you're in the DC area or will be here this spring, you can check out that exhibition at the American University Museum at the Katzen Art Center. And I'll start sharing links in the chat um, in, as we move forward so you have some links that are relevant to what we're talking about today. To watch our episode with Barbara, check out the museum's YouTube channel and subscribe to catch future Nimwa Exchange episodes. We can move on to the next slide. Thanks, Ashley, for driving. Today's episode is part of NIMWA, NIMWA's International Women's Day Festival and is generally, generously sponsored by J. Crew. For more information about all of today's festivities, which you can see on the screen right now, um, please visit the link um, that I will provide in the chat in just a second. Today, we welcome painter Cassie Nomoda, whose work transfigures the cultural mythologies and historical narratives of life in post-colonial Africa, particularly those of the artist's native Mozambique. She draws on art historical, literary, cinematic, and architectural influences to express her Luso-African vantage point. In addition to exhibiting her work worldwide, Cassie has collaborated on product lines for com companies like Catbird and J. Crew. So Cassie, welcome. We are so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you for having me on this special International Women's Day. Yes. So, We're so I glad saw you're here. international women messaging, so that's cool. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you. And I just um it's it's wonderful to have you, um, Cassie, and it's also really great. You all are tuning in from around the country and around the world. Um, and for those of you who have just joined, feel free to add in the chat where you're coming from. I also just wanted to give you a bit of housekeeping. Um, as always, we've enabled live transcriptions, um, which you can either see or hide by clicking on the CC button on the bottom banner uh, in Zoom. And also feel free to add your questions for Cassie in the chat or in the Q&A, and we will do our best to address all of those today. Also, as I said, feel free to share where you're calling from. So Cassie, thank you so much. We feel like you're kind of the perfect guest for our International Women's Day episode. You're joining us from Paris today. Ashley and I talked to you last week when you were in South Africa. Um, you were born in Mozambique and you currently call East Hampton home. So to me, I'm really curious to know more about how location and identity sort of come together for you and play a role in your work. Um, can you share a little bit more about your background and how it's reflected in your work? And also we're curious to know a little bit more about the places that are important to you show up in your artwork. Well, you know, I grew up living in many different countries and um, I think when you're exposed to those sort of um, different nuances and different cultures, those different sensories and different forms of light and, you know, all those sort of um, 
provide for a very enriched memory and enriched way of telling narrative. Um, and that definitely has played a, a role in, in how I think about storytelling and how I approach painting. Um, and then in terms of where I live, I'm, I'm based in East Hampton. I, I guess I would call that home because for me right now, home is where I paint. You know, um, maybe in different points in my life that might uh, be subject to different conditions and circumstances. But yeah, I'm in, based in East Hampton and I think the, the question of home is kind of a, a loaded one. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Cassie, we're looking right now at one of your images um, called We Delight in Earthly Offerings. And we'll share this as well as two of, these are some of your more recent works from 2021. And they all reference particular places. And I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about um, what places they're referencing and, and why that's of import to you. Yeah, I, you know, I think a little bit about uh, like regionalism, <laughs> but in a, a, a rather vague way. Um, there's something about imagining a place that mm -hmm. in some ways is non-biased um, and maybe we can all imagine together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've been to these places and sometimes not, you know, sometimes I would just open up a map and just think about different towns in my native country of Mozambique and um, and then even at some points I might even go into uh, Instagram and, and find little towns and just see what people are up to in those towns so that's kind of a part of the research but um, yeah like it's just imagining what it could look like and feel like maybe that's also based on these sort of vague memories I've had of like um, be, being with my family and then we would travel sometimes to the countryside like at one time when we were living in Kenya my father lived in the countryside and I can still remember what that looks and feels like so yeah thank you it sounds in a way like your um your places are sometimes named specifically um and for you are almost um sort of between a real place and the fantasy of what they they could be or what place could be for people Completely um, this, interwoven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. This next work that Ashley's sharing with us is called Hackneyed Limbs at Communal Rest somewhere in Biaxa. Is I'm, am I saying that right? I'm sorry if I mispronounced it's it. It's a Portuguese baixa. Means baixa. Yeah. <laughs> so we said X is like she. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And this work and the other, um, the, the one we just saw and the next one we'll see, they were actually part of a recent exhibition called Forgotten Limbs, right? Um, at Gabali Gallery. Yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that show. So Gabali uh, decided to do a kind of show with me to kind of close off the year. And uh, we had been planning that exhibition in, in advance. So I started on the works in 2020. Um, and I wanted to make a very um, in-depth show on some of the metaphors and symbolisms I had explored in my work. Sometimes it would be Maria, this character, uh, mm -hmm. female character that, I, that has a lot of intrigue that's multi-dimensional. And, um, and then, then sometimes there was rural settings I would paint and it's almost a way that I dovetail all these these moments in painting together because I felt like maybe that was necessary in a way to introduce the the work like this and now I feel like I can almost restart mm -hmm. um and the, the show the exhibition Forgotten Limbs in, in essence was um sort of uh, in a in a nuanced way um, depicting the longest war at, at, in uh, Lusophone Africa. I mean, now there's Sudan and that had the longest freedom struggle, but at, um, at that point in time, it was it was um, it was definitely Mozambique and Angola. So I sort of uh, decided to to depict the two Luso wars. I'm um, having more relation to Angola and then some moments that felt more personal and then some were just symbolisms and then um, looking into like depictions in art history and the, um, adding in surrealism and then also thinking about expansion in, in painting and um, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing about that. And you mentioned kind of looking back to our history and earlier on how location inspired your storytelling. Um, and I'm curious with this idea that the traditions, history and art of storytelling inspiring you, how did you come to painting as a means of storytelling? Um, well, I think life brought me to painting. Uh, there's in, in, and I stuck with it because I, it's the most um, maybe poetic way that I can express uh, storytelling, but there, there's, there's, in, there's a way that I also include uh, writing as, as prose. Like they're all sort of like these proverbial expressions because I studied cinematography briefly, but then the works also have a very cinematic uh, quality to it. Painting has been something I've loved since since child. You know that that sort of novelty that it can always be different and you can always explore and there's always surprise. At least for me, that's that that's how I um, fell in love with painting. Um, but there was there was moments in my life where you know I was writing or I was um, showing as more of an, a lens art photographer, there was collage. So uh, it feels like this is maybe the refined way that I'm telling narrative in a very um, juxtaposed and like nuanced way, but maybe at some point it might find itself in in, I don't know, a performance piece or, or film. I don't think that there's any end to sort of uh, narrative and it and also maybe that's the extension of collaboration why mm -hmm. it's so important to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love that connection that you made to writing because I do feel like your titles tend to be little stories in, in themselves yeah I, I I I because sometimes the work is so um symbolic and maybe it's a little vague I yeah, I don't like to speak totally for everyone. Maybe it's not, but I, I think adding the writing gives it a, another layer. Yeah, and I think Cassie, I'd read, um, and we talked a little bit about this in our, our pre-call that um, for you, sometimes titles come before the actual visual. Is that the case? And you talk a little bit about your sort of the, the order of your process. And then this may be a little bit divergent from that, but we do, um, everyone is like loving your palette and um, folks had some questions actually about sort of the consistency of your background palette, which is, um, and just uh, for me, it reads sort of as this liminal space, right? You're identifying particular places in some of these titles, but it also feels a little bit um, like it could be anywhere. Those are two different questions, but maybe talk a little bit first, I guess, about um, your titles and, and how, they, how they sort of help you visualize what you're trying to communicate. Well, yeah, you know, I, I when I travel and when I move around, I there's a lot of time with self, and um, for me, what sort of um, transgress it, it that transgresses from that is uh, writing. Like I like to do um, on my um, notes in my phone. I like to just write, mm -hmm. and. The, so usually the kind of expression will come first and then I might be so fixated on that expression that I start visualizing what that could look like. Depictions, things I see. Um, if I go to a museum, there might be something that, that resonates. Sometimes it's Seurat, sometimes yes, the other day I went and saw Italian paintings and then um, that felt very visceral to me at that point. So I think it's like the living also really takes form. So I would say half of it is like the studio when the execution happens, but I think the, the most major studio is, is living. Life is the biggest studio. It's the biggest expression. And I think, and, and the second question was about the, the background color. 
Cool. Yeah, so I, I can read it for you. And sorry, Asha, maybe we can go back again. Um, so Sandra was wondering, um, she said, she'll hope you'll talk a little bit about the backgrounds consistent color palette. So the, some of the works that we're seeing from 2021 seem to have sort of this consistency. It feels almost um, to me at least, it reads a little um, impressionistic, but I don't want to I don't want to push that onto your work if that's not the case. No, no, it's, it's true. I, I love Monet and, and Seurat and um, Cezanne. So th those were definitely what I was um, leaning towards. But I was also looking at, I was just at the Tate at that time when I had made these last 2021 works for the exhibition. Because I remember Francois had thought that the work was all done. And I said, no, Francois, there's six more paintings coming to you. You know, I just, I needed, and so, um, but I had went and saw Rodin at the Tate and the, I, I, I think the term for a headless man is called the cellophore. Mm. Um, and then I thought about, so sculpture is one thing and then there was like the, 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 the balloons of surrealism, but then there's also, that actually was a scene that I had seen in um, uh, a Diop Mambetti film, but then I, so sometimes I'll sit and watch things and then just like take screenshots and then I readapt it. So there's so many like layers. I think it's just having, um, knowing when it's the right moment. So there's a lot of intuition that's, um, that takes place and, and knowing how to make the right thing work. And then in terms of with these works specifically, I did these sort of like expansive backgrounds to just really make sure that we, we're aware that this is sort of set in some sort of like, um, a, a different dimension or a mm. dream world because um, we're re I'm recounting the, the the war, but I'm not necessarily making phone a photo journal or a real journalistic expression of the war. I'm, I'm approaching the war from the magical real. Um, and then the paintings from 2020 have these more in-depth backgrounds as multiple figures. So I needed this to create the space. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Ashley, for advancing. So actually, what we have on the screen right now is your piece from 2020, The Joy of Living Outweighs Misery and Sorrow. Can you talk a little bit about this work? Yeah, um, that was from the my Goodman show in Johannesburg in 2020. It was the inaugural show with Goodman. Um, and I won, it was the sort of beginning of the pandemic. And um, I remember sort of wanting to kind of get advice. And um, I remember most of like the elders in my life, my mentors and everything this, and I hadn't seen anything like this in a really long time, you know, or we had never seen anything like this in all our years. And um, there's a Swahili proverb called to live long is to see much. So it was a way that I was sort of like um, politely um, replying to what was happening globally in the in the health and sort of fear of crisis that was happening at that time and I just wanted to like um politely insert that there's we're still we're still in this journey we're still living and then so I, I had to kind of create this duality and this, this this body of work um the duality was sort of like um you know the the happiness and then the sadness and then and then this work I'm showing um sort of a direct a translation of, of of the show um mm -hmm. yeah thank you yeah <clears throat> Well, I'm curious, you've mentioned um, a few influences um, like the Impressionists and the Surrealists, but could you share a bit more or a few examples of who inspires you creatively other artists? Um, I mean, many things inspire me, like it's a, it's a who, what, where situation mm. really for me. Um, right now, Paris is really inspiring and um, I went and saw Joseph Boys, and that was really great. Uh, but in and it, it's always fluctuating. Um, sometimes it's like the impressionist. Sometimes it's the German expressionist. And then you know, I, I went and saw Alice Neal paintings the other day in Brussels, and that was incredible. Um, it's this one is Goya, right? The, but you know, we have. I thought about Goya's dark paintings or the black paintings that are in uh, Prado 
in Madrid that I usually go every birthday and spend a few hours in that the black room and look at um, those paintings and there's um, a painting uh, that he did where it was two men fighting with a club. So, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is called Two Men Fight with a Club. And then second title is We Have Become Strangers. So um, I thought about that as a metaphor to the pandemic where I, I felt like there was a lot of aggression between people, between neighbors, there was just a lot of fear and um, I saw it with my own eyes. And so I put, I decided that that was a, a really um, kind of important painting to put was the sort of, uh, I'm forgetting the name for uh, half horse, is it a nymph? Maybe someone knows. Centaur? I guess that's centaur. Yeah. Centaur. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Mm -hmm. I also, I just, lo I, I love this image. I think the shadows feel sort of Matisse to me. I don't know if those are shadows in the background that we're seeing, but I just, I just see all these sort of resonances with other artworks and I think it's really beautiful. I'm also curious, so um, about the two weapons that are being used, Cassie, in this work. So you have a javelin, which we may know many people may know um but what's a boron it's a it's a mineral to rock <laughs> yeah and it has connections uh, actually to women's health right yeah actually but i don't i wasn't thinking about that i was okay. i was I, I, mean, I, I was looking at the greeks yeah and um uh, and i think symbolically when they would do these sort of battle scenes that would be they would sometimes fight with with rocks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can we take a look at the next one actually i also just like to say i love the idea of you having a birthday tradition of going to the prado that sounds like an excellent way to celebrate <laughs> <laughs> or dark i don't know <laughs> it can be both <laughs> So great. Here's another one, um, Cassie. Um, it's your To Live Long is to See Much, which you sort of reference that title. Um, um, it's called Ritual Bathers Three. I'm wondering if you have any anything you'd like to share about this particular work. You know, I, I revisit a lot of my paintings and kind of readapt them into different forms and different styles. Um, and I had made Ritual Bathers. I guess a year or two before this one, but in a, a different setting. And I felt like I just needed a sort of meditative scene. Sometimes when I feel like the exhibition uh, uh, quality or in terms of depictions might be a little too intense, or I feel like it needs something to sort of like ground it, like a crystal maybe, I will, I will add a, a sort of, um, a cleansing scene or a sort of rebirth scene or something that we can we can go to the sort of like reset so um that feels almost like this the symbolism of like peace and mm -hmm. and love mm -hmm. i'm curious i'm going to throw in a question from one of our viewers um thomas is wondering um he said um your works remind him of picture book illustrations have you done any and are you interested in children's literature at all? Um, it, I was just at Mu uh, Musée Modern today and I was in the gift shop because I always love to go to the gift shop. And I was so <laughs> close to buying the Petit Prince like uh, mm -hmm. figure because I, I grew up with that book and I love that book. And I remember being so fascinated by the imagery in that book. And, also, like in a funny way, I'm thinking now, like the colors aren't that different from what we would see in the, the Petit Prince mm -hmm. um, in, in this particular painting. Um, but no, I haven't thought about it. And I, um, but there is an interest for me to, to write and, and make a book. I mean, uh, I have, I've already had um, an author approach and I've done two book covers for two different authors, so. There's, there's something there. Up next, maybe a children's book by Cassie. That would be <laughs> yeah. incredible. So great. Can we maybe advance to the next slide and take a look at um, these two works as well? Um, so these are also from 2021. Um, and they're, it sounds like these are part of a series, uh, Dance of Life. And we see on the left, number two with the pink background. And then on right, number three with sort of a greenish background. Can you tell us a little bit about these, Cassie? 
Yeah, I made three of these works. There's, a, there's, um, there's another one that's not depicted, but I felt like these two were kind of um, nice to show together. But I, I started uh, making these, these works because I was really interested in just sort of like line work and doing, mm. um, and then the sort of like unfinished quality in, in painting. Um, and these sort of had this sort of minimal paint. There's this sort of pigmented background gesso. Mm -hmm. um, and then thinking about, um, you know, historically dance in, in painting in the history of art, where we look at Matisse dancers, there's, you know, Gauguin, uh, Emil Nold would, would mm -hmm. portray dancers, uh, Edward Monk. So mm -hmm. I, this is sort of me again, like reasserting myself in, in the trajectory of art history and then like thinking about art history and then applying it to sort of a, a authentic narrative. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really important point you're making. It so resonates with us every day at the Women's Museum, but certainly on Women's Inter International Women's Day, this idea of sort of um, finding a space or a place for yourself in the trajectory or canon of art history, which has often excluded women and people of color. And these works for me, and I don't know if Ashley would agree, but we have several works by Mary Cassatt prints that are just these very, um, they're just very few lines that communicate a lot of information. And, and so for me, I think about those prints and how beautiful these works are because there's just sort of, there's just the hint of the figure with those very sort of diligently chosen and placed lines. It's quite beautiful. And even just that line between the figures, just sort of connecting and separating them all at one time is quite lovely. Yeah, I would agree. And it also yeah. actually reminds me of a series by um, Wang Yi Hutter that has two figures and they're like, one is holding the other. And then in the next one, it's like the opposite is holding the other. Um, and this idea of these pairings and this, almost like evoking this relationship with very mm -hmm. little visual information is something mm -hmm. that I think is really yeah. beautiful yeah. in these works. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit, Cassie, um, because, and this is, you know, one of the, one of the most exciting things that um, we learned about recently is that you collaborated with J. Crew on a product line, and we just want to, we took a screenshot, um, and it just, it seems like it just dropped last week. So first off, Amazing, congratulations, it's so cool. Thank you. And then we just kind of want to hear a little bit more about the collaboration, um, how it came to be and sort of, um, yeah, sort of uh, how you worked with J. Crew to create this really cool line. And we actually have another image of some of the uh, pieces in the product line um, that we can share as well. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, um, I guess we, we started in conversation when Francois Gavali opened the, the New York gallery in the Lower East mm -hmm. Side and I had shown in the sort of inaugural exhibition of the new space uh, three tile works um, that I had made when I was in Mallorca mm -hmm. and there were these sort of eight by eight inch tiles um, that I had done these loose drawings um, of fetal twins and sort of different um, uh, relations and then Olympia Marie the the designer of J Crew Women saw uh, saw the tiles and was very curious and asked Francois and then um, was interested in working with me in some capacity um, at J Crew had also she had worked with artists before me so I think there's something they were used to doing but um, I think never in the way that an artist asked to, to design a collection. Um, so that was different. Um, and I think I took the, the J Crew team by surprise <laughs> when I, I, you know, they all said, oh, Cassie, you're a natural designer. Um, but I, you know, I, I wanted to find ways to sort of create symbolism and metaphor in, in the clothes, but still have it in some way interlinked with with the painting so like palette is mm -hmm. you know we released it for for the spring um so I thought about palette and then it instantly took me to some of the colors that I use that are sort of more um spring-like and um then in terms of context of of the or meaning behind the work I thought mm -hmm. about my show that opened with Pippi Holdsworth in London Little is Enough for Those in Love um, 
and just using that as sort of a symbolism. So then I wanted to make a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. um, so then a wedding dress showed up and um, is a symbolism of that. So just finding uh, interesting like uh, ways to, to create symbolism in, in life essentially um, and to wear that and, and there's aprons that show up as uh, this idea of utilitarian. So sort of balancing femininity with um, mm -hmm. utility, which I think is uh, very authentic. Yeah, I love the, um, we talked a little bit about this, but this this notion of uh, duality in this collection, right? Some things are very sort of utilitarian and everyday wear, and then you've gone to the other end of the spectrum, right, with this wedding dress, and and yet there's sort of this, this beautiful connection um, across, there's this sort of thread across all of them um, that really um, connects them to your palette and just to your sensibility in terms of being a yeah. storyteller. Um, and they're beautiful is really important like I feel in the way I approach painting and then the way I approach anything so even though there's a there's a wide range of differences in in terms of the the you know a wedding dress to a workwear suit mm -hmm. that it's still it's still in some ways cohesive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, so you mentioned in our, we had asked you during our initial conversation um, about uh, five women artists who sort of inspire you. And I talked, you know, I know you talked a little bit broad, more broadly about your um, inspiration, but that's one of our big campaigns at the museum always is encouraging folks to know and be able to name women artists. And one of the artists you mentioned to Ashley and me is actually in some of these photographs, right? Yes, um, Susan. Yeah. And so, yeah. 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 Tell me, tell us a little bit about what about her work is really sort of to, speaks to you. I was just actually a part of Susan Sensolo's um, performance piece in Paris at the Community mm -hmm. Paris and went was really a powerful show. So if you're in Paris, please go see it. Um, but I have known Susan for over a decade now and I have been in Susan's life in many different ways. At times a babysitter to Lilac, um, her daughter, at other times a studio assistant. Um, and I think a lot of her practice is also, it's very much um, connected to the spiritual and, and, and same with me. So I think we ebb in that sort of um, same dimension when it, it comes to approaching work and um, also, you know, I've written for her cookbook. So, we, you know, at times we would trade like granolas we would make. And so there's a very much a collaborative uh, life and friendship that we share. Um, mm -hmm. And Susan's work is very much um, connected to uh, the making. Uh, there's a very much maker quality to it. And um, that for me is so inspiring and, and it's, it's also very truthful mm -hmm. um, and I resonate with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. She's in the, for those of you who are looking at the, the um, image, she's on the top left image photographed there in, in the suit. So we have a follow-up question, Cassie, about, um, first of all, you mentioned a show in Paris and Belinda's, called, she's listening in from Paris. So she wanted to, to make sure she heard you correctly. Where is the show that you mentioned? So Susan Sansolo's show is at the Community Paris. Got it, Community Paris. Great, thank you. Um, another question we have from Lisa. She is wondering, um, did you create paintings specifically for J. Crew, or did they pull sort of patterns or paint from your paint from pre-existing paintings? There's no paintings made for J. Crew. There's um, what we've done was with particularly with like the workwear suit or the apron there would be moments in my paintings, these sort of abstracted backgrounds, these sort of painterly brushstrokes that we took and turned it into a sort of print. Um, the scarves are just like moments in particular works. Um, you know, we have like an image of legs intertwining that's, you know, of a bigger, bigger work. And then there's a wedding scene, but that's a part of a bigger work as well. But, you know, there's, a, there's just a, a moment, a clip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for clarifying. That's helpful. Appreciate it. 
And I wanted to share um, another question that we got from Karen. And thank you so much, Cassie, for everything that you've shared already. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so Karen asks, how do your experiences and influences shape how women are portrayed in your art? I'm not sure I understand my personal experiences or? Mm -hmm. I would say yes, your um, personal experience. Or like, there are there are women in your art and what I guess what influences how they're portrayed, whether that's personal experience, something that you've seen. I, I, I go really from narrative, um, you know, I, I don't know if oh, it's always changing. It depends on the exhibition or, um, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm painting a friend and then that's like real time or if there's something um, that, that's happened, then maybe I'm, I'm painting from memory and then I'm depicting someone. But then sometimes I'm just trying to um, uh, maybe tell some sort of biblical story or, you know, and then there's a different kind of notion that's portrayed or, you know, so it's really um, multifaceted in, in the way I, I, I depict women. But the next two shows coming up are the most sort of, um, I would say feminine shows I've, I've done. That actually kind of hints at a question I have. You mentioned um, before we got started today that you're kind of at the end of a four month whirlwind, but I'm curious what's what's next? What's coming up for you? I have an exhibition in Brussels with Xavier Hopkins, and then I have an exhibition in the summer months, which would be Cape Town's winter months. Um, with Goodman Gallery, it'll be our second show. Um, and I then I will go to residency in Senegal for a few months. That's pretty incredible. I, I would like to I wish I traveled this years. much. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Exactly. It's so amazing. Well, again, Cass, you got to know how to take care when you travel this much there. So. I know. I can't imagine being, I'm very much a homebody. So I, I admire your, um, your ability and willingness to be away from home for such a stretch. Um, and also for tuning in with us or, or calling in from, um, from a distance. We have a little bit of time left with Cassie. So I know folks have been adding their questions to the chat, but if there's anything, any sort of burning questions you have for her, um, we can certainly share those with her right now. Um, and while we're kind of waiting to see if anyone has any additional questions, I just want to do a plug for our next program. Um, so mark your calendar and register for our next episode of Nimwa Exchange, which will be on Tuesday, April 12th at 12 p.m. Eastern. We will be speaking to the UK-based artist and museum shop collaborator, Michaela Siansi. Siansi will, uh, will discuss her product partnership with Nimwa's shop. Um, which in which she um, created original illustrations inspired by the museum's mission and collection. And we'll share the link to register in the chat in a little bit. Oh, and we have some questions coming in. Okay, Cassie. Um, Sandra is wondering, um, how has two years of COVID impacted your creative process? You know, I live a quite secluded life. So honestly, it hasn't really changed much. Um, my routine sort of stayed the same, um, which I'm very grateful for. I took my walk in the forest, I swam in the ocean, and then I got to painting. Um, so yeah, really not much has changed in terms of my, my studio practice or like if I felt any more isolated. Um, the only thing that was different was that I couldn't go see like my mom or my family in Mozambique when you know traveling was tough. Mm -hmm. I actually I saw a video that you did I think it was Goodman Gallery had asked its artists to come up with sort of short videos about sort of what 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 they were doing during the pandemic and you were um doing some moss gardening I wonder how that's going if you're still doing oh, that, that. <laughs> that was actually Gavali which was really oh Gavali sorry yeah yeah um yeah it's the different hobbies I mean I know people picked up like making bread and sewing and stuff but yeah I was in moss gardening obviously I don't know how that moss garden is doing because <laughs> I've been on the road but um, I'll get back to it that's awesome thanks Cassie um, well as I said thank you all so much for um, joining us today um,
Thanks, Cassie, for being with us. And please join us on March 12th, if you can. Don't forget to register. Um, April 12th? I'm oh, sorry, April 12th. It's March right now. Oh my gosh, <laughs> happy Women's Day. <laughs> um, and it is, uh, the International Women's Day Festival continues. So here are the um, kind of upcoming programs again. And I'd also just like to add my thanks, Cassie, so much. Thank you for speaking with us today. It's been a pleasure. For having me, it's a pleasure. And a thank you to J. Crew for sponsoring NOMA's International Women's Day Festival. And also definitely check out that collection that um, Cassie collaborated on. Yeah, treat yourself. And I hope everyone, <laughs> can get a everyone can get a massage or something today. Mm. Hey Amen. I love that. Thanks so much, Cassie. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank we appreciate you. you being with us today on International Women's Day. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.